Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll be covering all of the new features available in Reactor 5.91. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, check out our website for some more advanced tutorials on a wide variety of subjects. All right, so first of all, we have an improvement in the way that Reactor uh, reports the names of your parameters, uh, such as knobs and buttons and stuff, to any host, um, in this case, Ableton Live. So I've made this really simple ensemble here. It's just a knob inside two macros. And uh, you can see the way that it reports its name to Ableton is pretty ugly. So it's named it like macro colon macro colon knob, which is it's pretty unwieldy. So uh, the new feature we have, if we go to the knob and click on the properties and move over to the connect tab, we have a new parameter at the bottom here um, that allows us to enter any name we want to report to a host program. So a lot of the improvements that we're getting in this new release are related to improving integration with a host, which is pretty awesome because Reactor has kind of handled that pretty poorly in the past, so I'm happy to see these improvements for sure. In addition, we have two brand new modules and some new improvements to a couple of existing ones. So first off, we have the automation module, and this is pretty cool. It's used to send and receive automation data to a host. And in particular, this is useful because you can record automation data coming from Reactor from any source and kind of store it in a table in your DAW and then have use that table to um, control various parameters inside Reactor. So this just kind of opens up for creating new controls that are fully integratable with uh, host program. And I'll show you how we can set up an easy automation module in another tutorial. Uh, moving along, we have the hardware module, which I'm pretty excited about, but I actually can't talk about right now because I'm... Uh, making this video while this version of Reactor is still in beta and they have not told us anything about it. So I'm hoping this will end up being something that will allow us to integrate with machine, but I have no idea right now what it is or what it does, other than that it's supposed to interact with hardware. And next up we have some improvements to the mouse area module. And these might be the improvements that I'm most excited for because I've wanted this ever since I first started really working in Reactor. Um, so at the bottom we have a new output from the mouse area module called MO, which stands for mouse over. And this allows us to uh, know when a mouse is hovering over a mouse area, regardless of whether uh, one of the buttons is pressed or not. So um, in the past, we've only been able to get information out of a mouse area when uh, the user is pressing a mouse button, but now we can get data out of it at any time, um, which just allows us to create uh, more dynamic GUIs and controls. So this is going to be pretty cool. In addition, we have a new option in the function tab of the properties marked always send PX and PY events. So what this is going to do is whenever we are hovering over the mouse area, the PX and PY outputs are going to output events, even if you're not pressing a mouse button, which was necessary before. And again, this is just useful for creating uh, dynamic GUI controls. And um, let's take a look at that for a moment actually. I made a special uh, knob using the new mouse areas. Alright, so here's my new custom knob and it's a basic knob with a modulation ring on the outside and 
using a mouse area layered over it, um, you can decide whether the user is hovering over the knob itself or over the modulation track. Then you can pass that information back to the user using a visual cue. In this case, I'm just um, lighting up the knob or the modulation ring, depending on which one is activated. And then so the user knows when they click on the mouse um, which part of the control they're going to be changing. So the new mouse areas just open up a lot of design room for new and exciting control interfaces. Next up we have some changes to the voice info module and to use these effectively make sure that the voice info module that you're using is active. Um, in order to uh, make sure that it is I've just connected it to a numeric module that is marked always active in the properties. So our new feature are these two inputs here marked min and max which control the unison settings for the instrument. And previously you've had access to these parameters inside the instrument properties here. Um, what makes it so much more useful to have access to it with the voice info module is we can now set these values on a per snapshot basis. So with the minimum and the maximum both set to 1, any new incoming note is going to be sent to a single voice inside Reactor. But if we change the minimum value um, and the maximum along with it to something like 3, then each new MIDI note we get is going to be assigned to three Reactor voices, and they're going to be spread out um, according to the spread parameter you can change either using a spread module or also in the instrument properties uh, right next to the unison controls there. Um, and in order to make sure that this works just make sure that the uh, lock voices option is off in the instrument properties. It should be by default. So this feature is useful for creating um, synthesizers using uh, polyphonic unison which was possible before but it was a real pain so this is uh, a big upgrade in that regard um, and you know polyphonic unison is a great way to uh, just make your sounds a lot bigger and create a lot of depth into uh, the way that you can design synthesizers um, the final feature that I wanted to mention is that there's a new VST option in Reactor 2 that has 16 inputs and 16 outputs. And uh, this is just a really cool thing for creating um, custom mixers and just, I don't even know, you can kind of really go all out with it. I think the previous uh, versions of Reactor you could get a maximum of six inputs and outputs. So this definitely gives you a lot more flexibility in that regard. All right, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If you did, please check out our website, and I'll see you again next week with a new Reactor tutorial.